are you ulting? Come on, him. Or are you just so brain rotten dead that like you just can't? Cozy games are meant to lessen your anxiety. There's no pressure, no threats, no deadlines, no expectations. But these cozy games go against everything that a video game should be. The whole appeal of video games are to make you think in some way, or have intensity, some sort of action. Maybe you're given a challenge and you struggle until you get better. Maybe it's even competitive. But with this newer genre of games, Almost none of that is wanted. Huh? In fact, a big appeal is the almost idleness of them. The comfort in familiar repetition. The lack of stress because there aren't high stakes. The ability to turn off your brain and just play. By every connotation of what a video game should be, cozy games are bad games. But they're not, because they're extremely successful. So what they're doing instead is just expanding our definition of what makes a good game good. Think about a video game where you win for a team, you explore a really big world, you power wash that deck, you kill everyone, you slowly get better at that really hard level. Those are all parts of such different games, but what do all those experiences have in common? They give you the sense of accomplishment and progress. That is the one thing that's universal to all games, whether it's a shooter, an MMO, a puzzle game, or a farming simulator. You could say that all video games do are give you the illusion of accomplishment and progress because it's not anything real. But you do feel it, and that feeling brings you joy. And isn't that why we pursue accomplishment and progress in the real world too? Obviously we also do it to help other people and make the world better, but at a personal level, it's nothing more than seeking purpose and happiness. And cozy games seem to do that no less than the more established genres, or the more action-packed, intellectually stimulating ones. That alone tells us so much about how video games have changed, and what they can be, and also who they can be for. See, video games are one of the few mediums that can appeal to such wildly different audiences. The people who play strategy and tower defense games are looking for a very different experience than people who play competitive shooters. The same goes for visual novels, sports games, deck builders, MMOs. Those are all so different, and people generally tend to fall into the market for maybe a few of those categories. But they're all the same medium. And now, cozy games are cementing themselves as another one of those genres attracting a new part of the population who might have never touched video games otherwise. And what's especially fascinating about this is we're seeing a genre predominantly played by women. And outside of mobile games, that hasn't really happened before. 69% of the player base for farming and family simulators are women. For the record, I personally believe the best thing we can do to normalize women in gaming is by making it normal and making it not a big deal. But I think that this statistic is a big step towards getting there. A lot of women don't play games because they've historically been marketed to men, which isn't necessarily bad, but it's just how it was advertised after the video game crash in the 80s. But given how much cozy games have expanded the audience, marketing doesn't really have to look like that anymore. And this goes for older generations too. There's a lot of people who talk about their grandparents getting into Animal Crossing despite not normally being a gamer. Even people in the usual gaming demographic who just didn't really have time for it or see the value in it, now do. Cozy games are slowly bridging the gap of who video games can be for. And that means more and more people will be able to experience something together that they love. More and more people feeling a sense of unity over the same thing. And that's awesome. The more that the internet has grown, it's become increasingly rare to feel like everyone in your real life community is interested in the same thing, or even just anything similar. Remember when Avengers Endgame came out? Everyone knew that movie if they didn't already have plans to see it. I was in middle school when it came out, and I remember my principal had to stand on a table in the lunchroom and say, spoiling Endgame is not a valid reason to report somebody for bullying. Really nothing can explain the year 2019 better than that. Anyway, the point here is that there are very few of those cultural moments where you feel connected with a large group of people even without having spoken to everyone. You know that there's this thing happening and every Everyone's buzzing about it. The release of Animal Crossing was that. 
but a bit smaller. I had teachers who would show us their worlds in class. All my friends were buying Switches to play that game, and tons of social media accounts came out with the sole purpose of supporting it. Showing off your world, trafficking the villagers, trading fruits. Because this was a game that appealed to so many new people. It expanded the bubble of who can share excitement over video games. This paints such an optimistic picture about the future of video games. I mean, we've seen gaming expand a lot. Games being used for education, virtual reality, esports. I was on my high school's League of Legends team, by the way. I understand that the industry as a whole can look really pessimistic, especially this year. A lot of game studios making poor and exploitive choices, a lot of layoffs and pay cuts for game developers. But I do really have hope that as more genres like cozy games take off, more and more people will play games who might not normally and the market for them will continue to grow. Hopefully in a direction that's not too greedy. Hopefully we aren't just giving corporations more people to get addicted and have an unhealthy relationship with video games. I have a whole video whining about that. But I will say, of all the genres, Cozy games seem to be the least concerning in terms of ethics. A lot of games pry on keeping you playing so you keep making purchases, microtransactions, DLC, that stuff. But more than every other genre I see, cozy games are the most committed to having free updates and not being $60. And I have no doubts that it's because indie games make up a large portion of the genre. Yes, bigger companies are catching on, but even Animal Crossing has free updates, and the vast majority of smaller, casual games that you see are from smaller studios. Even the really successful ones, like Stardew Valley. It is rare to see indies dominate a particular category so much. Because in the past, indie games were kind of their own category. They're still an adjective that describe a game made by a small team of people, but the classification we used to see with, oh, here on the store page are the indie titles, isn't as good of a category as it used to be because the audience for these games is so huge now. An indie game could be a million different genres, and now Cozy is another one. But with the influx of Cozy games, we see good ones, we see bad ones, and there are, unfortunately, a lot of bad ones. Just like any trend, any boom in popularity of anything, a lot of low-quality, low-effort versions will start to pop up. When Hollow Knight first came out, we got a ton of dare I say copycat games? I'm not gonna call any out in particular, but they are everywhere. They came out partially due to feeling inspired from a great game, which is wonderful, but also to make money and appeal to the thought that, oh, if you like this game, well, I made this one and it's the exact same thing. A lot of the cozy games that we've seen come out in the last few years, especially since COVID, have been questionable. A lot of games with shallow gameplay, not a lot to do, that seem to rely on selling you the idea of a game over the actual game. Games obviously sell you a fantasy, and that's what they're supposed to do, bring you out of the real world and put you somewhere new, but in a lot of them there's just not enough to make it a fantasy. These games get a ton of downloads, but mixed reviews. People saying they loved the idea and it was fun for a little bit, but it's just not entertaining. That's because the line of cozy game and boring game is very thin. Because this is what cozy games have to do. The player should be able to relax in mine or tend to their farm, but it, it can't feel too grindy. They shouldn't feel time-bound or rushed, but they should still have goals and be encouraged to do things. Puzzles shouldn't require too much thought, but they should still be satisfying. The world should be fun to explore, but it can't be too big or else it's overwhelming. From a developer perspective, Think of how hard that is. It's no wonder why so many of these games are coming out and why so many of them just aren't the same as something like Stardew Valley. Because Stardew Valley struck a balance that is so hard to replicate. The game starts with a cutscene, showing you how your character is tired of being a corporate slave and is given their grandfather's old farm. It's in bad shape though, so it becomes your mission to clean things up. And, well, your dead grandfather will visit you again in two years to check up on things. And how you go about doing that is completely up to you. You slowly unlock different activities and are given vague indicators of what you should do, but there are no time limits, no direct quests aside from the occasional low pressure task. Each day, you choose what you want to do and slowly learn more about the backstory of each character in the nearby village. It's extremely self-guided and self-motivated, which is why so many people love it. If you want to be like me and max out the community center as fast as humanly possible, you can do that. The level of rigor you put into the game is what you get out of it, 
and because the baseline of pressure is very low, everyone can create their own balance of coziness. The cozy games that fall short usually do it because that cozy maximum is too low. There isn't enough to do, or tasks are too vague, so the average player gets bored. I imagine that it's very tempting as a developer to see a genre defined by relaxation and low stress, and think that it's going to be an easy game to make. Because in theory, you should be able to get away with less content, more repetitive tasks, and you're not tasked with creating adrenaline in the player or making an experience hard. But in the absence of those things, there's more that cozy games need to have instead. Mechanics that make repetition satisfying, and a wide variety of them. A rich world that feels immersive, heavy personalization elements. And above all else, you still have to do the one thing we talked about earlier that all video games have in common. Show you that you've made progress and respect your time enough as a player to make it worth it. And even if a game does all that perfectly, not everybody will be satisfied, that's inevitable. Some people say that the seasons in Stardew Valley make it too stressful because then you'll miss out on what you can do for half the year. Or passing out when it gets late is just too intense. To which I say... Skill issue. Anyway, my point is, cozy games are hard to make, which is why good ones are so hard to come by. And any game is a challenge to make. Goodness, you're learning a million skills. Art, storytelling, programming, music composition, a ton. But thankfully, today's video is sponsored by Game Maker, who can make that process a lot easier for you. Of all the engines on the market, Game Maker has been my go-to and has been for years. I learned the majority of my game dev knowledge through Game Maker, and that's before I did anything computer science. That's because it's probably the most straightforward engine out there. Let me break this down for you in like 20 seconds. Here you have sprites, aka your game art. You can attach code to this art by making it an object. You can then drag these objects into what's called a room, and now you see it in your game. You can also paint tiles to design this room. And then, well, that's kind of it, but now you just have multiple rooms for different parts of your game. You can also see everything you want to work with at once. It's never a pain to try and find where you put that script. You can edit your sprites with a built-in editor. It's great. Game Maker really makes the extremely difficult task of making a game as simple as it can be. It gives you a great foundation so you can focus on the important stuff, like telling a story and making your game stand out. If you don't believe me, well, Undertale was created using it, and so was Nuclear Throne and Zero Servert, and just a ton of really good indie titles. Game Maker is completely free to use for non-commercial games, and if you do want to eventually sell a game, it's a one-time fee for professional use. There's options to publish to PC, web, mobile, or console, so everyone can have the opportunity to play your game. Download Game Maker for free using the link in the description. Indie games as a whole are on the rise, and as a self-proclaimed indie enthusiast who has an entire channel dedicated to them, I'm really excited. 2020 is the year that cozy games really took hold of society, and so a lot of cozy games came out around then that were under-polished and kind of riding the wave of Animal Crossing. But now that we're getting close to the four to five year range since 2020, I think we're gonna see more games that have had longer development periods that are gonna be higher quality. Obviously, we've had cozy games come out even before 2020, and not all of them were a result of COVID, but it is insane how much of a marker COVID was for gaming history. I made some incredible friends in that period, and I bonded with them a lot over cozy games. So trust me, I owe a lot to them, and I know a lot of people who feel the same way. A lot of couples who are able to really get into playing games together, parents who found a new way to bond with their kids, people who might not have had a lot of friends in real life, found communities online. That interactive connection is something so beautifully unique to games, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Especially with all the incredible games that are going to come out in the next few years, I think more people are going to find something for them. But anyway, that's all that I have for today. I hope I gave you some little tidbits, some little nuggets to think about. If you're interested in the world of game development or indie games, please subscribe, it would mean the world. I love this stuff with my whole heart, and I hope I can show that in videos like these, and hopefully even inspire developers out there. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!